Now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage founder and CEO of Clarify, Matt Zeeler. Hello. Thank you very much for having me. I'm very excited today to talk about retail applications of machine learning. So I created Clarify just after finishing my PhD in 2013, where I studied machine learning applied to understanding images and video. And that's exactly what we do. So what is machine learning? We're hearing about it more and more in the news and the broader term AI. So AI is a term for all algorithms that have intelligence. Machine learning is a subset of those that learn from data. And a very popular one that you're hearing are neural networks or deep learning. Those are synonyms with each other. And they look something like this. They're called neural networks because they work just like your brain works. It's built up in multiple layers of processing from some input, in this case, a picture or coming into your eyes, and some final classification, the things you see, or in this case, it's predicting that there's a person or people in this picture. And these layers of processing have special names, like convolution, sounds fancy, but all it is is template matching. And very importantly, these templates are learned from the data. They're going to learn things like edges and colors and lower layers, but as you get higher, they'll learn like eyeballs and mouths, and then say face, and then be able to recognize that there's a person in this picture. And all of that is done by taking in examples that have been labeled by humans, and it can learn that mapping. So the more images you show it, the smarter it gets, just like a child is. They don't know much when they're young, but they get smarter as they grow old. So that's a quick crash course on neural networks and machine learning. And that process of training looks a little something like this. It starts off not knowing how to recognize an Oreo in this case, but if you start feeding it examples, positives, this is an Oreo, this is an Oreo, and negatives, this car is not an Oreo, that helps the system update those templates and be able to predict with high accuracy, 99.5% uh, confidence here, that an Oreo is present in the picture that it's never seen before on the right-hand side. So it's a very powerful technology, and it only really started working in the last four years. And I got the, the honor to work with people like Jeff Hinton, Yann LeCun, some pioneers of this field who have been working on this stuff since the 70s and 80s. It's been in development for a long time, but it just started working because of the massive amounts of data and computation we have today. And so you have to be thinking about it in your business. This is gonna change every interaction with your customers. But you have to ask yourself a very simple question. Are you an AI company? If the answer is yes, build it in-house. There's lots of tools out there. They're open source. You can use them. If you're not, then it's the same as every tech stack that you might use in your company. You wouldn't write your own database. You wouldn't write your own word processor or operating system. Don't even think about writing your own artificial intelligence. There's alternatives to that. And that's where people like Clarify come in. And we're not the only AI company. There's lots of AI as a service plays out there. And you have to have this, this matrix in mind. You could do everything yourself, but then you really need the team to do that, the machine learning experts, people to maintain this stuff 24-7, and that's very uh, selective, and it's very costly. That's kind of the maximum cost you're going to incur if you want AI in your business. Whereas these services, you don't need experts. They're very simple to use with user interfaces and APIs so that you can hook up any of your products directly to companies like Clarify. And the effort levels, literally minutes, you can get up and running. And I'm going to show you some of that today. So how does this apply to retail and e-commerce, which we're all here for? So there's lots of different applications, and they improve lots of different experiences. In the example of search experiences, every website in retail and e-commerce looks a little something like this. You have a box, and you ask users to search in that box for really interesting things. It could be something like this, which is very hard to describe uh, in words. You might say red lace-up sneakers with weird embellishments. Um, it's very hard to describe it, and therefore the search engine that you have on your site very likely will not retrieve results. So wouldn't it be nice if you could just take a picture, or your users could, throw it into your search bar, and find the products on your site that they can buy? Well, that's what we call visual search, and that's one of our uh, products that we help people improve the search experience. You can also search by any of these things that I showed you already, recognizing people or romance, uh, but it could recognize whatever in the world, and you can teach it to recognize whatever in the world. So you might be able to search for the things that the artificial intelligence can see and recognize dogs in this case. And of course, it would be very powerful if you could combine these things. Maybe you want stuff that looks similar to this picture but has dogs in it because you're looking for red dog shoes with weird embellishments. 
And so you can get very powerful results that would be a pain to be able to do manually or impossible. So that's the search experience improvements that companies like Trivago are leveraging. So they have 10 million plus hotel listings across the globe. Every one of them has professional photos uploaded. And they're organizing it by things like uh, outdoor pool, indoor pool, gym, spa, uh, ocean view. So that when you're planning your next vacation, if you search for pools in Jamaica, you might be able to find those listings and compare very quickly to make your decision and your travel experience easier. And that increases the conversion rate for Trivago. Now, if you think about product recommendations, a very similar story. And everybody in this room has experienced this. We've all shopped online. You, maybe I'm looking for uh, a blue chair, for example. And there's sections on lots of different sites that say, uh, these are things that you might like. And those are usually based on the last time I was here, I purchased these things. But those are irrelevant to me buying a blue chair today. So I don't want to see those. Um, but I also see other people bought these things. Well, that's also irrelevant. They didn't buy blue chairs, and they're not like me. So what if you could learn directly as you're interacting with the content what the preferences of a user is and recommend products based on that? And we were very excited to have West Elm do an integration with Pinterest and West Elm's product catalog to learn preferences from a Pinterest board to recommend products that a user might be interested in. And that increases the basket size and the revenue you can get per visit. And I want to show you what that looks like. So I have it up here. Um, this is all public. You can test it out yourself, pinteriststylefinder.westelm.com. You can grab any board from Pinterest. So here is some modern uh, interior design stuff. And all you have to do is drop the board right into the tool. You can see it found all the images from that board. And let's say I'm shopping for living room furniture. I hit submit. And so now it's learning from the images on that Pinterest board what I might be interested in. And then it's going to look through West Elm's product catalog and recommend results like this. So you can see it's recognized I'm interested in modern furniture. And it's recommending specific things. And I'm one click away to buying this product now. So this is what artificial intelligence can do for improving product recommendations. And we all know our, our users are mobile. We've seen a lot of presentations today talking about just that. And it's not just uh, you know, retailers on the ground. It's every business out there has to be thinking about their content. And I'm very excited to, to hear NBA uh, talking earlier today. They have a huge social presence. And this is actually a, a shot from what that social presence looks like, people hashtagging NBA. It's random. There's a lot of stuff, advertisements, pornography, that you don't want to associate with your brand. And it's not very useful content. But if you could organize that, actually teach it what is NBA, what is not NBA, then you'd be able to make use of that content in your next advertising campaign or marketing to these direct people that are interested in your brand. And that's exactly what this looks like here. This is actually a, a UI that we have in your account. You can teach it to recognize things like NBA. And you want to connect with those users to ultimately make a purchase, ideally. So people like Tradesy, these big marketplaces, they have lots of content being uploaded. And if that process is manual, you're not going to uh, get as much content as possible up to your users. So the sellers are blocked. And the buyers are not going to have a great experience. For the same reason we saw earlier, the search experience, if it's not tagged in a consistent way across your entire product catalog, it's going to be a bad search experience, because keyword matching is not the solution. And so uploading a product can be helped by artificial intelligence. Maybe it's a picture like this, some pants, and it can recognize that they're jeans. It might even tell you the designer or the color, and categorize this, speeding up the human who is uploading it, and making it more accurate and more consistent. And that's exactly what Tradesy is doing. They're taking in images, calling our API, recognizing what it is, and indexing it, making it a better experience to enhance that workflow of getting products online. And then finally, of, of course, there's the physical world. Uh, how can we help that with artificial intelligence? Well, let's see. If you think of any store you go in, there's lots of factors. There's the actual people that are there. How old are they? Their gender, their multicultural appearance, what's in their shopping cart. Um, that might give you a sense of what other things they might like to buy. Uh, how is the shelf stocked? What's on there? Are people actually looking at the shelf in the right ways? Uh, all this can be understood by understanding the pixels of those images. And so that experience can be extended even to your end users. And I'd like to show you a really fun uh, product we just launched. We like to call 
our mobile SDK, which lets you take this whole powerful artificial intelligence technology and run it directly on a phone. And so what this is showing is our model that recognizes over 11,000 different things automatically recognizing things in the audience. And if I move it down here, you can see on the bottom left is recognizing MacBook. That's because I taught it how to recognize very specific things. I move it around, and why don't I just go into airplane mode here? This is running 100% on my device. I don't need the internet anymore. And better yet, I could teach it new things. Maybe I'm going to type something quick because uh, I don't want to miss misspell it. So right in real time, you saw it in airplane mode, learn how to recognize William Sonoma, MacBooks, and maybe even Nike shoes. So that's the power of artificial intelligence that you can now get directly in your users' hands to help understand uh, how your users are interacting with the world and much more about them than you've ever been possible to do before. So thank you very much for listening to uh, how AI can help you. <laughs>